It was quite late into the night by the time Jesus and his disciples made their way to the Garden of Gethsemane. Just a few days back, they entered into Jerusalem with a lot of singing and cheering and a lot of joy. But now this group are just slowly walking up to the Garden of Gethsemane, quiet, solemn. Jesus takes Peter and James and John to a little further up, away from the rest, so that they could be alone. Jesus needed to be alone. He was filled with anguish and agony because he knew what were the things to come. All he wanted to was to have three of his closest friends to keep him company as he went a little further just to speak to the Father. Isn't it like all of us, when we are in times of distress and in times when we agonize, we look to having company, companions who would see us through, even if they are, there is little that they can do, even if they are just being quiet, they are sitting with us, the comfort of having someone just being there with us. Jesus goes a little further up. The Bible says a stone's throw away, so it isn't, it isn't very far away from this tree. He wants to be alone with the Father. He falls on his face in prayer and he agonizes. He's full of sorrow and he is sweating profusely. The Bible tells us that you know, it came, his sweat became like blood through his pores. It wasn't about physical pain that he was agonizing. He knew he had to endure that. It was the inner agony of he who is sinless, the Son of God, taking upon himself the sins of the world, your sin and my sin, and then to bear the wrath of God on our behalf. He is completely God and yet completely man, and that is where the struggle lies because he struggles as with the will of man against the will of God too because he knows what is ahead. And he is so tempted to avoid the cross. He is asking the Father, is there any other way other than the cross? And as he battled that through, he won that battle. He willingly submitted to God, the Father, his will. Now he steps away from prayer and returns to find his three most trusted disciples and they are asleep instead of watching with him. He had told them to watch and to pray and not fall into temptation. I asked myself, why are they unable to stay awake? Maybe for Peter, he just wanted to keep his eyes closed, wanted to sleep and not wake up because he remembers what Jesus has said to him at the upper room, that he will deny Jesus three times before the rooster crow. I don't want to wake up. That's what is in his mind. I just want to close my eyes so that it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. What about the rest? Maybe they're, they're so tired with things that went on and on ever since they came into Jerusalem. Isn't that like us too, that some mornings we just are so exhausted, we just don't want to get up. And we tell Jesus just a little bit more before I say, I wake up and, and I read the Bible and I, I, I do, I do spend, to spend a time with you. Just let me sleep in a little bit more. And the, like, the word sleep in seems to keep coming up for us. Luke tells us that it was exhaustion, but not of the physical type. It was exhaustion out of sorrow. And I believe all of that happened in the upper room. Jesus at the upper room had told them that he was leaving them. But he also promised the Holy Spirit to be with them. He promised his peace, his presence. He promised greater works by them when he goes away. He promised uh, them that he would open up a place, get ready a place for them in the eternity with him. He also said that he has revealed and will continue to reveal the Father, God, to all of them. But human, the human mind is such that we tend to pick up what we want to hear and then we dwell on it. 
And from that comes our emotional response. We hear words like, for example, cancer and all other information just blurs out. The disciples heard, in a little while, I will be leaving you. And that's all they heard. All else faded to the back. All the promises were, had no meaning to them. And so they trotted up to the Garden of Gethsemane, full of sorrow to a point of exhaustion. Jesus knows that. He knows that when we are tired, we are exhausted, that the enemy will pounce on us. He experienced it himself, 40 days in the wilderness. And at the end of it all, when he was tired, he was hungry, the devil pounced on him. So he told them, watch, pray that you may not fall into temptation. Watch as the soldier on duty would as he was on guard duty. But it's not about just watching out for the Jewish leaders coming up. But for yourself, for your souls, lest you are tempted. Now, Peter would later on understand what Jesus was talking about because he would take things into his own hands and he would fail this test. He drew the sword and cut off Malchus's ear. Malchus is this uh, guard from the high priest's household. And then at Caiaphas's house, he would give in as, as Jesus had predicted. He would deny Jesus three times before the rooster crowed. You see, when we are not watching, we give in to temptation. The rest are actually no better. They ran away. And sometimes I wonder if Peter was the better of the lot. At least he followed Jesus into the lion's den, so to speak. The others just ran away. That too is denial. So how do we keep from temptation? Jesus was tempted, but he came before the Father in prayer. He told his disciples to watch and Pray. His words provide a clear instruction for one way to battle temptation. That is to pray. Prayer sets our mind and our eyes on Jesus. It draws us into his realm. Temptation for us is to focus on the sorrow and the pain and the unknown that is to come. And the temptation is to run away, to give up, to give in. But Jesus says, pray. But yet Jesus also understands us absolutely. That is why he is such a wonderful God. He knows us through and through. He told his disciples, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We know that we want to do certain things, but the flesh keeps getting in the way. And so he says, I send the Holy Spirit to keep you at watch, to grow in faith and to learn to pray. Remember, he says that if you do not know how to pray, ask the Spirit of God to teach you to persevere in prayer so that when there is a need for breakthroughs, it is in his presence and in his enabling. One other little thing that I realized, Jesus asked three of them, Peter, James, and John, to be with him. I always think that the three of them were asked to be together so that they could help each other stay awake and pray. Unfortunately, they didn't, they didn't fulfill what they were supposed to do. But that does not mean that we stop doing that. Gather with others to pray together to watch with each other. The scripture says, when two or three are gathered a lot, it's made manifest in their presence. So let us pray. Let us watch. Because if we don't, we will fall into temptation. Before I end with a prayer, I want us to, over the next couple of nights, couple of days, to read through John 13 all the way to John 17, before Good Friday. I want us to read through and 
to know what Jesus spoke to his disciples in the upper room. But more than that, his prayers in John 17 for you and I, those are his promises. And when he prayed, I always, always remember when he prayed, he is telling us that he is continuing to pray for us as he sits next to the Father in the heavenly realms. Let us go to God in the word of God. Oh dear Heavenly Father, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. So help me stay awake and alert so that I do not fall into temptation, but rather fall deeper in love with you and into the works you are calling me to. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.